My guest today is Robert Green. Robert, how are you? I'm great, David. How are you? I'm doing great. Congratulations on the big change in your life. Thank you. I'm tell now, us, tell them about it. I am now semi-retired. Semi-retired. <laughs> yes. So you left Microsoft after I many left years. Microsoft as a full-time 50, employee. Fifty years you were at Microsoft. Was it, was it, was it that short? I don't know. <laughs> well, you were there a long time. <laughs> a lot longer than me. Uh, almost twenty years total. That's a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and now I am. Uh, semi-retired, so I'm on my own. I'm still speaking at conferences mm, like, like the one, one we're at now. Live Chicago. I'm still keeping my Visual Studio Toolbox show. Great. And, uh, it's a good show. Thank you. I'd love to have you on it sometime. I'd love to be on that sometime. And I will... Uh, actually, I get to, we'll get to spend a little bit more time coding, and then I'll figure out how to keep teaching people stuff that I learn. That sounds like fun. Yeah. So that's... Good luck with that. It's this a life like, work I know balance. this is early in that process. Yes, this is day three. Day so three. far, it's going awesome. great. <laughs> I like to hear that. <laughs> um, let's, what are we talking about today? What do you want to talk about? Graph. Let's Microsoft talk about graph. graph. All right. Because I don't really know that much about my graph. I want to learn something. Okay. Well, first, what is it? It is a RESTful API that you can use to query information and data in Microsoft 365 services. What kind of information? So mail, contacts, tasks, calendar items, SharePoint folders and files, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So I've got an application and I wanted to pull in oh, uh, the, all of the emails from the last two days on a certain email thread. I can do that. With you could do that. It's a little bit more, think of it more as getting to treat this information as data. Okay. So you know how to query SQL Server database. You know how to query Select Cosmos. star from whatever. Yeah. You know how to query all kinds of things. Imagine that you could basically query the information inside Office, for example. Okay. Well, you know, it would probably be easier if you gave me an example right. of uh, an actual use case. So here's a use case. Um, I'm going on vacation. Um, Already? It's only day three. <laughs> I know. So someone is going on vacation. And and I know that I'm expecting a, a important mail from my manager, right? And I need to check throughout the day to see if I got that mail. Oh, yeah. So what happens is, right, you get your phone out, you fire up Outlook, uh -huh. you may or may not see the mail, but now you are sucked into Outlook and you're doing your mail and you two gotta, hours later... You read all of Dave's meaningless drivel yes. in order to just wait for exactly. that one Two hours important later email. you realize, oh, I was supposed to be on vacation. <laughs> all I want to know is, did I get an important mail from my manager? Uh -huh. So I could write a simple application. It could be UWP, it could be a Xamarin app mm -hmm. on my phone. And when the app starts, it connects to... Uh, Office 365, and I basically send a query. Select count from mail where importance equals high and sender equals my manager. If oh, wow. anything that comes back, like SQL. It, it is, it's, and it's a RESTful API. So it's not literally SQL, but mm -hmm. you build a RESTful API query, and you mm -hmm. query your inbox. Well, then let me, let's talk about that. So I know what REST, RESTful APIs are. Essentially, mm -hmm. it's a, a, a call to a web service, yep. a get or a post. Yeah. I know what a query is, mm -hmm. but how do I get that query into the URL of the web service? Um, is so a, the there URL, is, is the body or what? So there is a, um, a, graph, uh, .NET, a graph.net client SDK. Okay. So we, um, we use that, and then... You would say graph client dot me dot me, something along the lines of me dot messages or me dot inbox dot request um, and then pass dot filter and the filter is importance equals high and sender equals address of the manager dot async. Oh, so that's the, that kind of fluent API yep, that we're exactly. used to in .NET. Yep. But then it's not. And then what that and then does, under the hood, it creates that web service call. Yes. All right. But that's um, not very class platform, though. If I wanted to build an iPhone app to do that, that wouldn't work. Well, it's .NET code. So if you use Xamarin, you use certainly Okay, do that. that example. Let's say I wanted to run a, a Ruby application to do it. I, mean, I should you be able to call it REST API. Bi well, you can build the query string yourself. I see. And then just send that using the usual HTTP. And that's what it is. It's built. Methods. It's added, yeah. appended onto the query string. Yes. Okay. That's right. So you just build a query string. Huh. And so now you build a simple app that when you launch the app, it's 
runs that query. If anything comes back, you get a smiley face. If, <laughs> or if anything comes back, you get a frowny face. If nothing comes back, you get a smiley That'd face. Cool. You'd write that code. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> now you... you return, return emojis. <laughs> <laughs> you could decide to then retrieve the actual mail, but in all likelihood at this point, you're going to have to fire up Outlook and do some work. But, oh, I see. But that's a nice uh, uh, alerter in that, that right. case. case that uh, yes. Now it's time to fire up Outlook. Right. Or I just want a simple app that just tells me when people's birthdays are. Uh -huh. So what I do in the calendar is I will add an all-day event, recurs every year, mm -hmm. um, and I put it in the category of birthdays. Mm -hmm. And now I want to know who's got birthdays coming up in the next month because uh -huh. I need to um, – we're kind of old school. We, send, we still send birthday cards. Um, or make sure I pop onto Facebook and wish them a happy birthday. Sure. So I send a query that is – I'm going to contacts and return the name of anybody who has, as one of their categories, mm -hmm. birthday. Hmm. So it's a query, and it returns data. Very cool. So that's for personal usage. You could easily extend it to business scenarios. Mm -hmm. You have an app that manages customers. Okay. Right? You might be doing loans, or you might be doing something. And when you, you have a, a reminder to call a particular customer, so you go to that customer's page, and what information do you want to know? I want to know what are the tasks that I've created uh, for myself for this customer. I want to know, has this customer sent me any mail lately? Mm -hmm. I want to know, I'm waiting for the customer's contract to be created. So when I get to that customer page, I now need to know, oh, I wonder if the contract was created. All right, context switch. Leave the app. Go to SharePoint. Uh, you go to the SharePoint you could site. Query SharePoint. Drill down into the folder. Look for a folder with that customer's name. Inside that folder, look for a file called contract. I'm already losing interest. Exactly. It's a lot of drudgery. <laughs> exactly. And I have context switched. Or do a query. So right. query SharePoint. Is there a folder with this person's name? If not, there's no contract. Right. Is there a folder with this person's name? If yes, look for a file that says contract. Hmm. Does that file exist? The contract's ready. File doesn't exist, the contract's not ready. Okay. Do it in process as a query. And the, the cool thing about Graph is it lets you create those types of queries. So now you're querying and treating this information as data without having to do the context switch of go over and look up things yourself. Right. So it doesn't necessarily give you the ability to do anything you couldn't do manually yourself, sure. but what's the point? You can automate that. Right? Yeah. yeah, automate it. Now, is it, is it just for Office 365 data? It's uh, for anything that's Microsoft 365. Or um, Microsoft 365, I should yes. which is uh, now, more inclusive, I think. Right, than so you, know, you can query Azure Directory, and I oh. think you can probably query some Azure services. I'm more familiar with the Office stuff because, okay. you know, having been in this industry a long time, I've done a lot of Office development. I used to do a lot of Office development. <laughs> and, we didn't you know, have Graph in those days. We had no, VBA. And we, we had VBA <laughs> code running inside Office. I've written that code. Um, we've had Visual Studio Tools for Office. We've had .NET code running inside Office. Um, we have had the ability to do OLA automation or COM automation where you fire up Office. And those are were great uh, and good solutions for a world where you lived in Office or you didn't mind firing up Office. Right. But that doesn't really work that well on your phone. Sure. Or on a server. <laughs> or from on a server, right? And really, I don't want to fire up Outlook. I right. just want to know, do the data I that have, have that a I mail, use. right? What is this person's mobile phone number, mm -hmm. right? So if it's information, I can treat it as data. And that, to me, is the coolest thing about Graph, is information that's sitting in these places, I can treat as data, and therefore I can write queries against that, and then I can take actions depending on the results. How do you know what data is available in any one of these pieces of Microsoft 365? Um, one place to start is the Graph Explorer. So that That's shows you, yep, it is a website. You can get to it easily from the Graph Docs page. Mm -hmm. um, and you can, it shows you a bunch of examples and it will show you the query string that returns that data. And you just get a whole bunch of data in a big old JSON string, which you would expect. Okay. Um, 
And, and then that's you, essentially a data dictionary, that JSON string. Yep, and mm -hmm. then you can go into the API for each thing and see for each thing, whether it's contacts or tasks or mail or events or whatever, and then see the information that comes back. But it's it's exactly what you'd expect, right? What do you expect to come back from a contact? Well, it's display name, it's given name, it's you know potentially address, work phone, mobile phone, home phone, Yeah, I think phone, I could probably blah, blah, guess blah, blah. somewhere. I might yeah. not be able to guess the spelling of them or the casing right. of them. That might, yep. I don't know if casing is important in this API, but... Um, yeah, probably. <laughs> or, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> if you're building but, the query and there, string, And there may be is, some yes. unexpected yep. things in there that I didn't know yes. about. For example, Outlook, contacts in Outlook. Yeah, they've got all that, but they also have all these... They have user-defined fields. Right. They have obscure yep. fields that nobody uses. You know. Right. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I, you can go into the Graph Explorer and go into. There's a, a bunch of sample queries. Click the one for contacts, and you know, get my contacts. And then there's the string with all of the information. Right. So you could use that, or you could go over in the API and look it up. In the uh, the so what it does does the uh, .NET SDK is that strongly typed? Will that tell you the properties as well? In other words, if I open up a, a contact dot, does it auto populate that? Um, we can look it up. No, you could take the JSON and then create C sharp code from it, mm -hmm. but the query itself, you're querying the collection, so it would be, you know, me dot contacts dot get. And uh, then so. in a select, you could then do dot select to only return certain fields. And that's a string. But that's a string. That's okay. not strongly typed. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. It's more flexible that way. Yeah. This SDK, mm -hmm. is that uh, is that just available in Visual Studio? Or do I need to install it? Or how does NuGet package. Oh, okay. So you yep. create a pro project, right-click, Microsoft manage NuGet. Graph and search for that, and there's a NuGet package for it. And then you've got access to all those objects. And yep. And you can get whatever you want. Yeah, so you can go to the docs. I love saying this. Go to the docs. Docs are actually. I know. I, I docs <laughs> used really to good. be not awesome. Yes, now they're awesome. And now they're actually really, really good. Yep. So not only is is there a good bunch of documentation, but there's a bunch of sample applications okay. that you can download, um, whether it's web or UWP or C sharp or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then there's also some getting started. So if you want to create your first UWP or um, ASP or Xamarin app and use Graph, there's docs that walk you through that. You create the application, then they show you how to hook into Azure Active Directory because, of course, you're going to have to sign in. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. That's, uh, there's some security issues. Yes. If I'm accessing mailboxes, for example. Yes. That's and it's basically all based on permissions. So when okay. you create the application, you have to specify what permissions, like any other application, you have to specify the permissions. So okay. the first time you use it, you'll be asked to log in as yourself, whether it's to your corp or your personal. Okay. And then it says, this app wants to send email on your behalf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, okay. Create calendar events on your behalf. It's about, pretty upfront. Uh, so any app that wants to send email on your behalf, you need to explicitly be OK with that. Mm -hmm. um, access your contacts, et cetera. Um, create files. So. Uh, you have the ability to read and write to SharePoint or OneDrive or presumably to Teams, since Teams is just SharePoint behind the scenes anyway with the, the files that are, that are stored I actually did not know SharePoint. that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's literally true. I know there are hooks into SharePoint. And you know that OneDrive is SharePoint behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you and I are essentially SharePoint under the hoods. <laughs> oh. Oh, you lost me there. You didn't know that? Oh, yeah, it's true. <laughs> I read it on the internet. <laughs> cool. <laughs> is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have? Um, I think that the thing to do is to, is to just start playing with it. It's really, really cool. The idea of being able to query that information in a very lightweight manner um, and have the processing be done on the, the server, wherever the data is, and then just sent back to you just opens up all kinds of opportunities of things you can do. And then just go play around with it and learn how it works and then let the ideas start flowing. Um, it's pretty easy to use. One thing to be aware of is um, the actual syntax and the capabilities are not exactly the same across all of the various types. 
as you know no doubt would would expect mm -hmm. um so not everything supports the same level of filtering mm. um, okay. as as other things but um the query language is is the same okay. under the hood um and it's getting a little bit more and more um you know as 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 time goes on the, the folks that own these products um, have to create the API that is, makes it available to be talked to. They'll start merging a little bit more. Um, but you can get awfully far pretty quickly, very which nice. is very, very cool. Robert, thank you so much. Thank you, David. First, friends don't let friends use bad technology. And two, friends help their friends learn how technology works. <laughs>